I have returned from my second and final journey on board the topsail schooner Oosterschelde. With sufficient sailing days and all my assignments complete, I am now ready to become a navigational officer on all sailing ships. All that remains is some paperwork. That means that I won't be leaving on another journey anytime soon, so I can focus fully on the rebuild of the Tigerai together with that for the rest of the year. My name is Gijs and this is my dad. And this is Schooner Tigerai. We have recently started a major rebuild to get her ready for new adventures. And we are sharing the process with you. Subscribe to stay tuned. During my sailing trip, Dad has continued working on the boat. Let's have a look at his progress and see how he's doing. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> and uh, look at the windows. Years of my life. <laughs> it's all stress. Insulation and the, the linings of the windows. That's about it. <laughs> what else did I do? I don't know. Sheets of the lanterns. And the uh, ship's horns. Two ship's horns. And um, what else? Not much else. In there. Ah, in the, in the back of the, the saloon. <laughs> in the back of the, in the aft ship, I cleaned out the whole. All the, the the cabin and the, um, the bunks and uh, all the woodworms. For some reason, it got full of woodworms there because it was all oak and the woodworms like oak. So uh, I had to clean that out. How do you call them? The shore. Um, leads sockets. <laughs> I had to invent them myself because what I wanted wasn't for sale. Even though he doesn't think so, Dad has done quite a lot of work. Now that I'm back, we can work together to continue on the jobs in and around the wheelhouse. We will remove the main engine control box in front of what will soon be the pantry. Dad suggested to do this to prevent bumping into it with your knees while preparing coffee. Ideally, this should have been done earlier, preferably before the floor installation, but it's better late than never. Of course, the ignition switch and all the dials need a new location. So I'm using up some free space on the new navigational console to have them nicely inside. With the control box removed, there is a gap in the floor planking that needs to be filled. Unfortunately, these PVC floor planks fit together in only one way. So to replace these three planks, half of the floor needs to be dismantled. Our initial goal was to ensure the floor could be easily removed, especially to access the floor heating pipes below. This turns out to be a good test. It's a relief to find that it only takes 10 minutes to disassemble it all. Creating new planks from the leftover stack is also a quick task and reassembling it all takes another 10 minutes. Next I need to reconnect all the dials. Once that's done, the only way to check if everything is functioning correctly is to run the engine. Let's hope I didn't make any mistakes during the connection process.
to check if the temperature gauge is working, the engine needs to run for a while. Initially, everything appears to be running correctly. The RPM and hour counters are working, the oil pressure gives good values, and the temperature indicator is rising from 70 to 80 to 85 to 90 to 95. Steam coming out of the engine. So, what happened? A few months ago, we relocated the cooling water expansion tank to a better location. After which, we did deaerate the system, but not with a running engine. We didn't think a second time about it because the job was finished. But now that we run the engine for the first time again, some air in the system accumulated around the cooling water pump. Long story short, the cooling water pump was full of air, so it was not pumping. And the engine ran a bit warm. Thankfully, we stopped the engine in time and after quick deaeration, we could run the engine again and straight away saw the temperature dropping. Since they had very nicely insulated the roof of the wheelhouse and painted all the ceiling panels, we can now cut them into shape and install them. It's not a very big job, but it's another milestone in getting the wheelhouse finished. With the ceiling in place, we can install lights, so that we don't need construction lights anymore. And speakers, so that we can actually use the radio that's installed in the dashboard and get rid of this old thing which gives more noise than radio. We are installing LED spots which are almost flush with the ceiling and give a lot of light. Some places in the wheelhouse get an extra not so bright red LED because it can be very annoying when you are staring outside in the night and somebody goes inside to make coffee and blinds your eyes with the light from the wheelhouse. To minimize the light even more, all these red LEDs have their own switch. That also created some foundations for the navigational lanterns and antennas on the roof of the wheelhouse, as well as for both ship horns. For the smaller horn, the air compressor is currently hanging on the wheelhouse ceiling. It was previously located outside on the roof, directly behind the horn, but we decided to relocate it indoors to shield it from weather conditions and salty air. Later it will get a well insulated box to minimize the noise. The air it supplies just needs a deck penetration in the roof to get to the horn. The largest ship's horn receives its air directly from the engine room air vessel. To get this air from the engine room to the roof, we require two deck penetrations and a pipe with a valve running through the wheelhouse. We could have done this before installing the floor, but why make things easy? We just drill a big hole in the cement particle board of the floor heating and a smaller hole in the deck below. Now we can start do some welding. The big horn itself wasn't horning properly anymore, so we decided to open it up and see why. 
It has been painted shut very professionally, so we used some heat to get it opened up. As you can see, it's very dirty inside. Now that it's clean, we give it a new layer of paint and it's ready to install. After installation of the small horn, we noticed that one also wasn't doing a proper job. So we took it off again and opened it up to clean it. It turned out the bracket holding the back shell of the horn was broken off on one side, allowing air to escape. Now that it's fixed, it should work properly. We can now install the navigational lanterns and the antennas and connect all the wires for them. We only have two gooseneck cable outlets next to the mast on the roof of the wheelhouse. I want as little cable penetrations as possible in the roof because every hole is a potential leak. To cover up the cables running from the gooseneck to the lanterns and antennas we run them underneath the solar panels in a nice bundle. Now I can install the lights and we can test them. The cables running up into the mast like the radar and some more lanterns can now be pulled as well. And finally, we can connect the stern light and the aft anchor light.
Now, practically all cables are pulled. All navigational equipment is functional and the navigational lanterns are working, so we can close up the ceiling for now. Time to continue with the rest of the interior in the wheelhouse. But that's for another time. This is all for now. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.